Love him or loathe him, Tom Cruise has been a Hollywood giant for over a quarter of a century now, with a career that includes A Few Good Men, Rain Man, and of course 1983's Losing It, one of my favorites. But has everyone's favorite Scientologist become risky business for Hollywood? I feel the need. I do. I feel the need. The need for a loop. Joining us via satellite tonight from Los Angeles, Us Weekly West Coast Executive Editor Ken Baker is here. Also from the City of Angels, USA Today film critic at large, Scott Bowles. And from New York, writer for Entertainment Weekly on newsstands now, Ken Tucker. Gentlemen, welcome to The Loop. Uh, Mr. Tucker, I want to start with you. Why did Paramount yeah. let Tom go, in your opinion? Why, why did they cut him loose? Uh, they, they let him go because uh, this 83-year-old guy who owns Viacom said... I'm sorry, your behavior is unacceptable. And instead of you doing the usual corporate speak and being polite and saying, oh, Mr. Cruz, we love you, he said, no, you're, you're, you're nuts, and we want to cut loose. You're losing us money. Goodbye. Hit the bricks. So you don't think it was Tom who decided to pull the e-brake on his own career with Paramount, then? You're not buying those rumors? That, I think that's the, spin, that's the spin he's trying to put on it. But I think what I think is at bottom at this is really interesting is that honesty has become controversial. Tom Cruise acts honestly nutty and spontaneously the way he it wants to do. And this 83-year-old boss of his acts honestly and is rudely firing him. And suddenly, the entertainment press goes nuts. All right. Like, well, oh, well, my Scott, God, over Hollywood's the last falling. Six years, over the last six years, Tom Cruise has accounted for 32% of Paramount's gross. I mean, like, right. uh, letting a guy go like that, isn't that a pretty, pretty risky move? Isn't that a bad decision? It's a bad decision. It's going to come back to bite him in the butt. It, and it wasn't a personal decision. It wasn't about Tom Cruise's personal life because we haven't seen Tom for a month. He's been quiet. We haven't seen his baby. If anything, this would have come a month ago. The problem is Paramount's house is in shambles, and they've decided to make some moves. What's interesting thing is that Paramount decided to burn this bridge completely, and Tom is going to make him pay for it. This is a guy who's still, whose movie made $400 million worldwide. You can't bank on anyone the way you can Tom Cruise. And he showed a little weakness at the box office. They cut him loose, and they're going to be sorry for it. All right, Mr. Baker, what do you think about that? I mean, the, the couch jumping, the vitamins, you know, the, the baby Siri. I mean, like, is, he, is this a guy who's going to have the last laugh? Does Tom still have the juice? Well, here's the thing, is that I would hate to be Paramount when Tom goes over to Warner Brothers, makes another movie, and it grosses $500 million. And yeah, he's a freak. He's a little weird. You know, he's a little bit too vociferous and preachy. But at the same time, his movies do make money. And the last I checked, studios are in the business to make money by selling their movies. Here's the thing is that what I found out is day two on the story out here in Hollywood is that people are actually, for the first time in probably years, feeling sorry for Tom Cruise. They used to think, oh, he's a freak. What a weirdo. Oh, this guy's too much. But now, I think Sumner, Redstone, and Paramount, they were so excessive. You know, I think a lot of people put themselves oh, in Tom's shoes and said, hey, I feel sorry for I feel I sorry. Wait, wait, Mr. Tom Tucker, Cruise were, you, were you up all night crying for Tom? Were you, were you in tears oh, for him? Not at all. I mean, this guy's been granted his supposed freedom. I mean, what is his, you know, this independent production company that he's got, that they're going to make movies, what's on their slate? Death Race 3000, uh, The Eye, a remake of a Hong Kong horror picture. These are not great movies from their production company. Yeah, but, but Ken, I think this- Tom Cruise has really got to come back to reality and give a good performance like he did a few years ago on Collateral, and he'll make some money. I feel, I mean, like this guy was making gr- uh, money on the gross of these pictures. The company was taking the fall for his lack of popularity. This is capitalism at work. I'm well, now, sorry. This Scott, is, let, me, let me ask. Is this, is this all on Tom Cruise's shoulders or are other A-listers facing the same problems with the production companies that Tom is? Well, what you're going to see is that A-listers are going to be judged a little more harshly. Lindsay Lohan got a letter for her behavior. I'm surprised nobody sent a letter to Mel Gibson. I think what you're going to be seeing is when a movie doesn't perform well, studios are going to act a little more quickly, claiming it has something to do with their personality. But it's all about the bottom line. If this movie had made $200 million, Redstone would have absolutely no problem with whatever Tom Cruise is doing. All right, now, no, Mr. Baker, yeah. on the same day that they and announced their drop in Tom Cruise, they announced a two-picture deal with Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Is this just ironic coincidence, or do you think this is all planned to be a PR blitz to try and get uh, the public looking at them again? Okay, I will stand up and say that Trey Parker and Matt Stone have offended more people in the world 
with their humor and their barbs at people from political to ethnic to racial, you name it, than Tom Cruise ever has. This was never about Tom Cruise being a weirdo and being a freak. This wasn't about that. What this was about was money. It's business. Six months ago when they were negotiating, Paramount was negotiating with Tom, they were like, oh, we intend to renew our deal and Tom's great and we love Tom. And then all of a sudden the money wasn't working out. So it's like, ah, oh, we're done and Tom's a freak. I don't think it's fair to him. All right, Mr. Baker, final word yeah. to you, sir. With, with, the, with the bottom line in, in everybody's mind now, everybody's looking at the numbers, is the, the years of the A-list celebrity, are they over? Are they done with? Well, I think what's happened yeah. is you've seen a world in which one star goes from movie to movie to movie. There's no more bankable stars. You know, Brad Pitt can have a, a pretty good gross with Mr. and Mrs. Smith, then the next movie could just go down the tubes. And that's what we're seeing. And the studios are saying, look, we're not going to lock in long term. We're not going to make a deal because we the fame and the celebrity is so fleeting now All that right. the new crop of stars are always up to take over the next one. All right. We'll have to see if Tom Cruise can Chaos remain a bankable star, of course. We'll see if he'll continue to be that bankable star that we know. But someone needs to write him a pres prescription, perhaps, for a water and a handful of one-a-days because the vitamins cure everything. I hear uh, they can even cure crazy. Thanks to our guests, Ken Baker, Scott Bowles, and Ken Tucker for keeping us in the loop. Thanks, gentlemen.